uh, how to intervene in chronic ischemia syndrome, MI with normal coronaries, um, uh, oral semaglutide, and COVID in the heart. So lots of great speakers coming up. Welcome, Dr. Nushin, Dr. Manoria, Dr. Leila. Looks like people are joining in. Welcome. This is our last day, and uh, but we had a chock full of information. Can everybody hear? Yes. Yes, I think Layla, yes. Hello, yeah. everyone. There Hi, you go. Hello. 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 Hey, welcome. How are you? Very good. Dr. Minori, I, I think you're on mute, sir. Very good. I think just yes. unmute. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. We are starting this next session. And uh, as I said, we have some great topics. We're going to start uh, Dr. Samer Alaham in UAE and then Dr. Um, Majdi in, uh, from Egypt. Uh, let's see, Dr. Layla is going to speak, right? And Dr. Minoria, and then ending up with uh, Osama Halak, Dr. Osama Halak. So welcome and thank you, team. Let's get started. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Omar Halak for inviting me to this wonderful Portis conference. For the next eight to 10 minutes, I'll be talking on oral semaglutide innovation of the century. GLP-1 receptor agonists were previously available in an injectable form. Although they produce good glycemic control, minimal or no hypoglycemia, decreases weight, decreases ACVD, and they have been recommended by all guidelines across the globe for treatment of type 2 diabetes with ACVD or at high risk of it. But their availability in an injectable form has precluded their widespread use across the globe and only less than 10% eligible patients are on injectable semaglutide. So several attempts have been made for several years to produce an oral formulation, but they failed repeatedly. And this was considered to be a daunting and a near impossible task because of panoply of reason. Because when oral semaglutide is given orally, it undergoes degradation in the stomach due to low pH and proteolytic enzyme. It has a limited permeability across the gastrointestinal epithelium and the bioavailability is very low, less than 0.01%. So it produces only limited absorption. But all of us know medicine is essentially a resolution of uncertainty, and this has time and again been proved on several occasions. And after repeated experimentations, success was achieved by co-formulating semaglutide with absorption and answer snack. So when this co-formulation is done, the absorption and answer snack causes a local increase in pH, protecting it from proteolytic enzymes and increases solubility. It promotes semaglutide absorption across the gastric epithelium and increases the bioavailability of oral semaglutide. And this is the uh, oral, this is semaglutide, which is co-formulated with uh, absorption and answer snack 300 milligram. So when this oral semaglutide is taken in the stomach, as you can see, it is absorbed transcellularly and even after a single dose of 10 milligram, sufficient levels are reached and this is persisting for 24 hours. So if somebody misses a dose, it can be taken the next day. This shows the exposure response relationship and you can see whether you take semaglutide orally or subcutaneously, the levels are exactly same. So oral semaglutide is now now available in a pill with the efficacy and safety of injectable semaglutide. Oral semaglutide is the first ever peptide available in a pill across the world and is the innovation of the century. Already launched in five countries across the globe and in India it has been launched in mid-January 2022. 
It has been tried in nearly 10,000 patients, and the Pioneer Phase 3A is the clinical program. It has been tried in Pioneer 1 against placebo, Pioneer 2 against SGLT2 inhibitor AMPA, Pioneer 3 against DPP4 uh, cetagliptin, Pioneer 4 against GLP1 receptor agonist uh, liraglutide, uh, Pioneer 5 is in renal impairment, Pioneer 6 is the CV safety trial, Pioneer 7 is flexible dose adjustment was a DPP4 with extension. Pioneer 8 is an add-on therapy to insulin. And Pioneer 9 and 10 are the Japanese trial versus liraglutide and dulaglutide. And the sole trial, superiority trial, is ongoing. So what is the glycemic efficacy of oral semaglutide? This shows that oral semaglutide results in reduction of HbA1c to the tune of 1.5% which is better than most of the oral antidiabetic medication. Seven out of 10 patients achieve the goal of HbA1c less than 7%. And if the baseline HbA1c is more than nine, the reduction in HbA1c is to the tune of 2.6%. Asians have a better glycemic response to oral semaglutide, as you can see on the slide. The beauty of oral semaglutide is that it uh, provides a disease-modifying approach by targeting six of the eight components of venous octave and helps in blunting the progress of the disease. And this is achieved without any hypoglycemia. It also decreases weight by uh, five kgs. And when we look at the combo of reduction in HbA1c and weight, larger number of patients achieve this combo goal. And a 5% reduction in weight, you can see, produces marked improvement in a panoply of cardiometabolic parameters. And when we look at the reduction in HVAC, as you can see on the left, or the reduction in body weight, as you can see on the right, uh, they are identical with oral versus injectable semaglutide. This is the CV safety trial of oral semaglutide, the Pioneer 6. It achieves this goal of non-inferiority and the reduction in primary endpoint of cardiovascular death. MI in stroke was to the tune of 21%. Cardiovascular mortality was reduced by 51% and all-cause mortality by 49%. And this is the pooled analysis of the cardiovascular outcome data of sustained 6 in Pioneer 6. You can see a 24% reduction in the primary endpoint cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke. And this is the sole trial, which is the superiority trial, which is ongoing. And the duration of this trial is five years. So what are the doses? instruction is to be taken on an empty stomach with half a glass of water, nothing to be taken for the next 30 minutes, and then the patient can have this breakfast. The first dose is started with 3 milligram daily for one month, then it is escalated to 7 milligram for the next, next month, and after another one, 14 milligram, this is the maximum dose. And this, you can see the side effects of uh, oral semaglutide, exactly the same to injectable semaglutide, to the left the nausea and to the right is a vomiting. They are entirely same. So oral semaglutide is very useful in patients who have an established cardiovascular disease or at high risk of it, patients in whom hypoglycemia is a concern, patient of diabetes with obesity, patients who are not able to achieve very good glycemic control with one or two anti-diabetic medication, and patients who are already on injectable GLP-1 with poor compliance, they can be shifted to oral semaglutide, and in CKD, even up to EGFR, oral semaglutide can be used, unlike the SGLT2 inhibitors. In the Indian context, diabetes occurs a decade earlier, cardiovascular disease occurs a decade earlier, and the advantage of oral semaglutide is that it can be initiated early in the natural history of the disease and will help in blunting the disease progress. So in summary, oral semaglutide is the first ever oral GLP-1 receptor with safety and efficacy equivalent to injectable semaglutide established in clinical studies. Oral semaglutide provides good glycemic control by a disease-modifying approach and decreases HbA1c by 1.5% with minimal or no hypoglycemia. It decreases weight by 5%, which is a favorable effect on a variety of cardiometabolic parameters. And oral semaglutide is poised to improve the compliance, can be initiated early in diabetes to blunt its progress, and will prove to be a game-changer. Thank you. I want to thank all of the speakers, uh, chock full of information, as I promised, right? And um, we have only five minutes, and we have such uh, great um, moderators here, Dr. Layla, adjunct clinical associate professor, University of Sharjah, 
uh, Professor P.C. Minoria, Director of Minoria Heart and Critical Care Hospital in Bokwell. Dr. Nushin, Consultant Cardiologist, Dubai Health Authority. So I just wanted to give you guys that honor. And um, I think in, in the whole um, uh, breadth, length and breadth of all these talks, I found one consistent message about uh, endothelial dysfunction as probably the basis of all of these things from Dr. Sammers talking about hypertension and hyperlipidemia being such risk factors um, for coronary disease and uh, um, ischemia, Dr. Magji talking about ischemic burden and uh, where to inter when and where to intervene. Um, and the, uh, Dr. Leila and the Minoka, right? Um, all the way to Dr. Uh, Dr. Halleck, even the post-COVID syndrome. So I wonder you got to, I wanted you, and Dr. Minoria, right? Um, talking about um, what is semiglutide and how effect, uh, effectively making a change multi-organ. So I just wanted to give you guys the opportunity to talk about that. We don't have a lot of time, maybe four more minutes, and then we have to go to our uh, symposium. Dr. Leila, what do you think about Minoka and endothelial dysfunction? Well, it is very interesting um, topic. And unfortunately, Annie, uh, women are usually five times commoner to get this case than uh, men. And of course, we know this, the endothelial dysfunction is one of the main uh, cause of it. And the microvascular um, um, diseases is one of the cause for it. And it's usually it's very difficult for patients, especially when you see them in the clinic and they come back and then they have pain and they come constantly and you've done everything and even to the extent you've done the angio but they still they have pain and you don't know what to do to them i think we always say that the uh, the microvascular is the reason for it and i think the um uh, controlling the risk factor uh, in these patients and controlling the symptoms will be the best treatment although we said as you as you've noticed in my presentation not all of the risk factor is uh, the conventional one is uh, present in these patients uh, as we've noticed in the presentation and the question which comes uh, and says why m women more than men uh, unfortunately it's there the uh, there are so much answers is still not clear about why do women get a so many it's more commoner in men than women and so many questions we have about men that has not been answered. One of them is the uh, treatment plan. What's the best treatment plan for them? I think that's a very important to, to, to discuss, especially about women. Dr. Nushin, what do you think about um, that you're in the yeah. way? Yes, uh, you know, as a physician, we talk about astrophysiology, endothelial dysfunction, and other factors in the pathophysiology of atherosclerosis. Uh, but when it comes to patients uh, himself or herself, uh, they don't know about endothelial dysfunction, you know? Uh, if you tell them you have endothelial dysfunction, they would probably go and change their doctor. And where, where I think um, Dr. Leila's presentation was very important because, you know, you have a patient uh, that has normal coronary angiogram. If you have abnormal coronary angiogram, it's so easy to communicate, um, I mean, it's easier to communicate with the patient or patient's family. Look, you have one or two or three uh, artery disease, so you have to do so this. Is how you communicate this message to a patient that you say your coronaries are normal or they are not that bad. So how would you do that? That's that's the tricky one. And I think these kind of patients, they need more time for us to, un to understand the whole uh, concept. I'm not interventionist, but I always tell my, my patients that, listen, my colleague, Dr. Omar, fix your arteries, <laughs> but it's the end of the story. It's not the end of the story. So yeah, yeah. we go thank on. You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think yeah. we have one more minute left, and then Dr. Minori, I wanted you to maybe take it uh, another level. Like, what about nitric oxide and uh, the endothelium and these uh, nitric oxide deficiencies in these endothelial dysfunction patients? Is that important to look at? Yeah. This oral semaglutide, uh, the injectable semaglutide is a blockbuster for treatment of diabetes. It uh, produces good glycemic control, decreases weight, and minimizes ASTVD. Now the same is available in an oral form, so it will greatly improve the patient compliance. Less than 10% of patients across the globe who are eligible to take GLP-1 are taking GLP-1. So with this, not only more number of patients will take, but the adherence will improve. 
and it can be initiated early in the course of the disease because there will be no hesitation in initiating the therapy and this will blunt the progress of diabetes and if the progress of diabetes is blunted, CVD will be less because it targets six of the eight components of the ominous octet. And perhaps the endothelial dysfunction improves yes. in that setting and increasing nitric oxide uh, by the endothelium. So thank you all very much. You guys are amazing. I think we have now a symposium that we must go to, and that's going to be about uh, acute coronary.